All right, so get ready, because today we are diving into some seriously strange waters. We're tackling the Pascagoula abduction. This case is, well, it's both baffling and captivating. Just imagine yourself back in October of 1973. Picture a calm evening on the Pascagoula River, Mississippi. We've got two buddies, Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker. They're just out for, you know, some good old-fashioned fishing. Nothing out of the ordinary at all, right? <laughs> Well, that is where things take a turn for the bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it's all well, what makes this case so fascinating is how it puts the mundane and the unbelievable right next to each other. This wasn't like a dark and deserted highway or something. This was a familiar and everyday setting for lots of people. And I think that actually makes it all the more unsettling. Oh, I bet you've got these two average Joes, right? And suddenly, <laughs> bam, they're thrust into a real life sci fi encounter. According to Hickson and Parker, they were abducted. And not just abducted, abducted by strange creatures. And get this, from an egg-shaped object. An egg-shaped object that just appeared out of thin air. Uh -huh. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, okay, come on, that's a story for sitting around a campfire. Oh. But hold on. Uh. There's more to this case than meets the eye. Oh, you're absolutely right. This wasn't just a case of some blurry lights in the sky. Nope, not at all. The level of detail... That's what gets me. The level of detail Hickson and Parker provided about how the creatures looked, their movements, even the emotions they felt while they were being abducted, allegedly. That's what makes this case stand out. They didn't hold back on the specifics. No, they certainly did not. They described these beings as having gray, wrinkled skin, crab-like claws, and these strange cone-shaped things right on their heads. They even talked about how these creatures moved in this really jerky, almost robotic way. It's like something straight out of a science fiction film. And we have to remember, this was way before those really detailed alien descriptions were common in pop culture. Right, and it's not just what they saw that's interesting. Hickson and Parker also claimed they were given medical examinations. Medical examinations right there inside the craft. These claims, as bizarre as they might sound, they add a layer of complexity this goes way beyond your typical, you know, run-of-the-mill UFO sighting. Okay, see, now that's where it gets really interesting to me. What do you make of these medical examination claims? Well, it's one of the most debated aspects of the whole case, that's for sure. Skeptics, they often point to the lack of any physical evidence. There's no physical proof to back up these claims, they say. But then you have others who argue that the psychological impact on Hickson and Parker which, you know, we'll get into a little bit later. But they say the psychological impact suggests that something big, something really profound happened to them that night. It's like trying to solve a puzzle, but some of the pieces fit and some just leave you with more questions. But let's back up for a second. Let's go back to the events immediately after this alleged abduction happened. If this happened to me, I don't know what I'd do. Most people would probably keep quiet about something so bizarre, right? Potentially unbelievable, but not Hickson and Parker. They went straight to the authorities. And that, that right there, is a turning point in the whole story. It's not exactly an everyday occurrence, right? People don't go reporting alien abductions to the police every day, especially back in 1973. This wasn't something that tried to hide. They went looking for someone to tell it to, someone to believe them. Why do you think they were so compelled to come forward like that? Ah, that's a good question. Maybe they were genuinely terrified. They needed help making sense of what happened, you know what I mean? Or maybe they felt, I don't know, a sense of responsibility, like they had to share their experience with the world. What do you think? Well, I think you have to look at the social context of the time. It was the 1970s, height of the Cold War, lots of paranoia, and UFO sightings, well, they're becoming more and more common. So maybe that played a role in their decision. Maybe in the middle of all that uncertainty, they felt like, well, people need to know about this. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah. So it was like the stage was set for a story like this to take off. Yeah. And then there's how the authorities reacted. I mean, they must have thought Hickson and Parker were, I don't know, crazy or just messing with them. You'd think so, right. But this is where it gets really interesting. Law enforcement, they approached the case with skepticism at first, of course. But even they couldn't ignore how genuinely terrified Hickson and Parker were. They were in shock. They weren't laughing. They weren't making light of it at all. Everything about them said they were visibly shaken. And that made it much harder to just dismiss what they were saying. So it wasn't just their words. It was their demeanor, too. It was their emotional state that made people wonder if maybe, just maybe, they were telling the truth. Exactly. And you have to remember something. This was before the Internet, before everyone had access to information about UFOs and alien abductions. The authorities were dealing with a situation they couldn't easily explain, and they couldn't just brush it off. It's like... You know, truth is stranger than fiction. You have these two ordinary guys, and bam, 
They're in this extraordinary situation. Yeah. And the authorities, I mean, what could they do? Yeah, they were left scratching their heads. But it wasn't just the authorities who were intrigued. This case, I mean, it blew up. Oh, absolutely. The media went crazy. This wasn't just a little local news story. This was full-blown frenzy. Pascagoula, Mississippi, the epicenter of a huge UFO event. I can just imagine the headlines. Aliens in Mississippi, fishermen meet spacemen. Yeah, you know, I... It must have been wild for Hickson and Parker. Well, I know. Imagine going from one day casting lines on a quiet river to the next, bam, you're on the global stage answering questions from reporters and, like, UFO experts. Total media circus. And they were right in the middle of it, that kind of attention. It's got to be overwhelming, even in normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. But for Hickson and Parker, who had just gone through this traumatic experience, it's surreal. It's got to be tough to handle. Absolutely. And you could tell they weren't looking for fame. That's for sure. They didn't want the spotlight at all. Which makes you wonder, did all that media attention help them or hurt them? It could go either way. It's a tough one. On the one hand, it got their story out. People are still talking about it. But on the other hand, it brought out the skeptic. It's about balance, right? You yeah. need the scrutiny. You need people digging for the truth. But you can't just dismiss something because it sounds crazy. Exactly. And that's what's so fascinating about this whole thing. We have to decide belief or skepticism. Let's talk evidence. What did they find at the abduction site? The million dollar question. No smoking gun, no alien artifacts, no pieces of a spacecraft. But there were some strange things, things that the investigators couldn't explain. Like what? Give me the details. For example, there were these indentations in the ground, right near where the craft supposedly hovered. Indentations? How big? That's just it. We don't know exactly. Some people said maybe landing gear, maybe some kind of energy from the craft. But it's all speculation. Another piece of the puzzle, but no answers. What about those markings on Hickson and Parker? Ah, uh, yes. The markings. Weird scratches and abrasions, not like anything they'd seen before, they said. So what caused them? Well, Hickson had these circular marks on his arms. Some people thought maybe medical instruments. Medical instruments on a spaceship. Chills. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? But again, no concrete proof. So, intriguing physical evidence. Oh. But nothing conclusive. Okay, time for the polygraph tests. Now, I know they're not perfect, but they can be pretty telling. What happened when Hickson and Parker took them? This is where it gets really wild. They both passed. With flying colors. No way. They passed. Yeah. So the lie detector couldn't even trip them up. It really makes you think, doesn't it? It really does. Even with the polygraph, people still argued. It's like, no matter what, there's always room for doubt. It makes you think about what we consider proof. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like we hit a wall, you know? It's like our usual ways of figuring things out, they just fall apart. We want proof, something we can hold on to. But then something like this happens, and it's like, nope, not today. It makes you think about Hickson and Parker. What was it like for them after everything calmed down? To carry that experience all those years. It must have been heavy. One thing's for sure, though. They never changed their story. Never. Really? Nope. All the scrutiny, the skeptics, even people making fun of them. They stuck to their guns right till the end. Wow. Talk about conviction. It really makes you think. If it happened to you, would you have that kind of strength? To hold on to something, even when everyone says you're wrong. And think about it. They weren't getting anything out of it. They didn't become like UFO celebrities, weren't trying to make money off it. Just this is what happened. And that was it. There's something really admirable about that. Just sticking to your truth, no matter how strange it seems. It makes you wonder what goes on inside someone's head after something like that. Did it change them, do you think? It had to. Whether it was really aliens or not, that experience, mm. it leaves a mark. It makes you think, why hold on to it for so long? Especially if it wasn't about fame or money, like you said. Maybe it was about responsibility. Like, they had to tell the truth, even if they didn't understand it. Or maybe it was just about holding on to that shared reality. Even if it was a reality no one else believed in. And that's the thing about the Pascagoula abduction, isn't it? It just keeps us guessing. We start asking questions, looking for answers, and we end up with even more questions. It's a good reminder to stay curious. To keep an open mind. Because sometimes the most incredible stories... They're the ones without easy answers. Exactly. The universe is full of mysteries, and some of them might stay that way. And that's okay, because it's those mysteries that keep us exploring, keep us looking up at the stars and wondering. So, next time you look up at the night sky, remember Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker. 
two ordinary guys who had one extraordinary experience. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the unknown. Until next time, keep exploring.